morning, everyone. As I said, Adam Kaminsky, and I'm going to be approaching bias from two perspectives. That when it comes to bias news reporting, as well as bias in a data set. Uh, what you use that data set for does not matter. It's all about the bias in the data in the data set. If, yeah, so just some things that we're gonna go over is what it is bias. It's a very flexible term. Uh, the influence, good, bad reality, and so on and so on. And yeah, just a disclaimer, I do think that this is a pretty good presentation, but I'm biased in that way, so don't hold that against me. When we talk about bias, if you just give a Google definition or the trust me bro definition is that it is an inclination or prejudice as well as a distortion of opinion or distortion influenced by personal factors. Uh, a bit of the etymology behind bias is it actually comes from the Greek word epikosios, which uh, means to be the epicenter of something and to do whatever it takes to be in that position using your own means. Plot twist, that means it's, that's not what it means. I just went, got the first Google search to see what the etymology is, and I just reported it to you in a false way, but nobody had a look of confusion as to why bias related to epicenter. So just keep that in mind when we talk about reporting. The influence of bias is similar across the different domains, particularly when it comes to news reporting, it's dramatics. They like to emphasize something for whatever ulterior motive they have, whether it be clicks, whether it just be traffic on their website. News outlets tend to take the bias that might already exist within them and dramatize it because if something's more interesting, someone's going to click on it and be more interested in it. When it comes to the more technical side for data sets and machine learning or data engineering, if there's bias in your data set, your outcomes and predictions based on data are going to be erroneous and therefore give you an invalid outcome or not what you're expecting as it's not representative. The good, the bad, and the reality of bias. The good is that you have something called fair bias, which means that it's representation of the bias in the real world. So if you're applying a model to a real world and you claim that you have fair bias, it's because the world around you is biased or the domain is biased in itself. Uh, the bad, of course, is that it is bias. So it means there is some form of prejudice that could lead to favoritism or just ulterior motives because you have that bias. And it can distort views as well as not so much your opinion on something. The most interesting thing about bias and news reporting, the negative side is it impacts public perception. So it's how you perceive the others involved in that topic, not so much the topic itself. And then the reality is, of course, that bias will always exist. We are humans. We do have preferences. We have things that we prefer, and that shows. In the world around us, we see bias every day, and we try to make data sets that aren't biased, but then they don't represent the world. And then when you do include it, the model might seem to have heightened levels of prejudice. And I want to focus a bit more on the news and its impact of bias. Uh, it, they are predominantly negative, unfortunately. Uh, Self-organized conflict. Uh, when we use social media, we flock towards people that we have similar opinions to. It's just more interesting that way. You can communicate better. While it might be fun to cause some conflict and joke around with people, at the end of the day, you do want to organize yourself around people that agree with you. However, when news reports exacerbate a topic, these groups form together with that public perception forming of the groups surrounding it, whether it be sports, politics, health, food, doesn't matter. These groups form and the conflict organizes itself online, leading to conflict, as it says in the name. Furthermore, the clickbaity side of articles comes into play. They want views, they want traffic, 
news outlets are businesses at the end of the day. Uh, so they'll click and drive whatever brings customers to them. And on top of that, when you get these clickbaits and these organized groups all coming together, it forms uh, lots of debates, heated debates, where you don't really want to listen to the other side. Uh, one of those common debates is the meme generation. Which generation has the best meme? Uh, I'm just going to leave that there, and uh, we'll just move on. When it comes to radicalization, the influence of these groups just gets emphasized more and more and more because the tighter the group is, the more radical their views are. And this can go from, in sports, for example, a team versus team rivalry with a lot of respect can lead to a foe versus foe, uh, and it can get quite violent. But it also leads to people being a bit of denial because they're so radical. They don't listen to the other team, uh, which is why United's going to win. And it's not Photoshop there. Top of the log for those of you that no, no. Um, cherry picking, uh, us developers who work with Git, should be most of us, will know exactly what cherry picking is. We, we're choosing what it is we want, and the news articles do the same thing. They will choose what they want to report from the position that they want to report, and that leads to a cherry picked outlet and story for whatever agenda it is that they're trying to achieve. When it comes to money, you might not think that the news has that big an, an impact, but we've seen the likes of Elon Musk make a comment about uh, Tesla stock and it will plummet or it will rise or a cryptocurrency. Uh, but one of the biggest showcases of people who use these sites and their inability to fact check or laziness to fact check is this big boy right here. Previously, we associated it with something that was of not necessarily authority, but it was like a proof that we knew that this was the company or it was the official spokesperson. And as some of you know, X.com led to uh, allowing the ability to purchase that. And a fun fact about the influence of misreporting is some internet trolls went online and for Eli Lilly, a pharmaceutical company, they said that they were going to sell insulin, well, not sell, they were going to give insulin away for free. And they had this check mark and no one bothered to check and Twitter did nothing about it and their, tox and their stocks tanked and they're still recovering. So this misinformation and lack of awareness of something is the reality behind bias as well. But what actually causes bias? There is a correlation here. Typically it revolves around what you select and how you present it for the news. They want to flip-flop. They want to get whatever people want to listen to and read to, which is why they have a homepage with the most relevant articles, the ones trending. Uh, there's also, in the digital age, the throughput and output of articles are so frequent that you need to be the first one. And people don't always take the time to read several different articles. They'll only read the first one because that's the one that came up first and they want up-to-date information which is why people like to use Twitter for news. Who knows why? Uh, the It's giving pick me is pretty much because news outlets have been around for years uh, back when they used to have news anchors and then it was just uh, newspapers, right? You would have to wait before you got the news for the week. And news outlets use that. They use that place of authority to kind of say a few more scandalous things if I can it's become a lot less professional and more opinionated despite claiming to be objective. And then of course, there's a narrative that certain, especially in politics and sport, that outlets want to push and they will try to get you to think that way. But as bias influences public perception, not your opinion, it still can push a narrative towards certain groups. And data sets is again, it's all just selection bias. Uh, where you select from, he looks important, they don't look important, they don't look, look important. They take it from one end of the spectrum. When it comes to a war, they'll only speak to the president. They don't always speak to everyone that's in the trenches all the way up. And it's a matter of who do you pick? And I say you need to fill that out evenly distributed. Same with location and your bubble, which is what you're confident in. It's the people you know and trust, but they are going to have their own bias, which leads me to you. 
you look like a biased fella over there. We're, we're, we're all biased. And I don't think that bias is the issue. I think it's how we present the bias and how we actually handle it and what our motivation is for using a certain kind of bias. And lastly, it's how do we stop bias? Diversifying your data sets as well as your sources for your news article or data set. Not meaning where you're getting it from, it's where you get it from, the type of data, the location of that data, all these random sampling collection points of your data is what's going to impact the diversification of your data set, making it more representative. Then there's overfitting, which is just doing too much. You try to remove so much bias that you add more bias. So you need to make sure you don't overfit, but rather find the balance between keeping in some of that bias and giving, again, giving that motivation behind it. Our lack of supervision isn't to have some superior looking over you, collect your data or write your article. It's to implement unsupervised machine learning for your data sets, because if I were to go and label my data, there's an element of bias already there because people are biased. And lastly is to embrace the bias, but only when necessary. And that ties into fair bias. You need to make sure that the bias that you include, you make people aware of and motivate the psychology behind the reason for keeping that bias. In the age of uh, machine learning, everything's so secretive when it needs to be more public and people need to know what the data is that they're using and why they're using that particular data. Lastly, to bias or not to bias. Throughout the whole way, I've stated that bias has its positive impacts, it has its negative impacts, and at the end of the day, they will, it will always depend. There will be moments where bias negatively impacts, where it positive, positively impacts. But at the end of the day, what you need to focus on is the reason that you've removed the bias or the reason that you've kept the bias and explain that to people and make sure that they are aware that there is bias. Thank you.